Okay, so we'll get started. I'm just going to let you know that my podcast is called. So thanks for coming on, guys. My podcast, which I'm just starting, and I really appreciate you guys helping me out. It's called Let's Talk Real Estate at Home with Barbara Scarlett in Fort Erie. It's going to be hyper local, even though it's about the Niagara region and it's about real estate. I'm going to try and keep it hyper local to Fort Erie on most things. So welcome. And today, um, We are going to dive into the conversation of mortgages. I'm here today with Melissa Stack and Sherry, say it for me. What's your last name? (laughs) Inya. Thank you. Bless you. (laughs) From Centum Omni Court. uh, And uh, they are actually our mortgage um, brokerage within our office at Century 21, but they help many of agents like myself throughout the industry as well as um, buyers. So thanks for being with me, guys. Thank you. Thank okay, you. So let's get started. Um, interest rates. They began their upward trajectory in March of 2022, but the real impact wasn't felt until the later part of 2023 and 24. Melissa, I'll start with you. How long do you think people can sustain these rates before they start going into financial strain? And you're probably already seeing it. So we are already seeing it Um, right now. We're starting to see, well, for about the last year and a half, we're starting to see everyone come out of those low twos, some even 1% rates, which they are now going into a five-year rate um, and they're about. So they're doubling and sometimes tripling their rate. Uh, They are significantly impacted with their mortgage payments. And depending on how they were in the last five years financially, those decisions, um, they are really feeling the pain of the higher higher payments. Um, I've spoken with some other financial um, banks, and they are seeing a lot of people coming in and trying to refinance, and we're seeing it too. A lot of people refinancing, consolidating debts, trying to use the the home bank to get them a little more comfortable with payments. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so many people, in order to have sustained it this long, are probably dipping into their um, equity, dipping dipping into their savings. Um, yeah. Sherry, what do you see happening if the rates don't come down? For long term, I mean, this is this it would be pretty detrimental. Um, I think right now, just to touch on what Melissa was saying as well, we are seeing that people have dipped into their savings, have relied on credit. Um, and, and now they're coming to us sort of looking for a solution, but breaking that two year, uh, 2% interest rate that they've got, you know, they've got for another couple of years to take on new financing makes absolutely no sense because it puts them almost in a worse situation. So a lot of the times we're finding that our, our hands are tied in, in having a truly beneficial solution. Like right now there's a lot of band-aids and, and bridging of gaps essentially just to make sure that people can can get a little bit further now while we wait for things to improve, fingers crossed. And hopefully we're going to start seeing that in the summer and throughout the next year or two. I think we're probably still a little bit further away from from some really, really better rates. So we're just going to see some improvement, I think. Let's talk about that. So the rates, um, you know, depending where you're listening, you know, some people are saying that because fl- inflation upticked again, that maybe we're not going to see the rates drop the way they're talking about. Maybe we're even going to see an increase. Then other people are saying probably April, maybe we're going to see it come down. June, we're going to see it come down. You know, domestically, our government needs to bring that rate down. But if you look at it globally, you wonder, is that going to happen? What do you guys think about that? I think they have to. I just think it's going to be prolonged. It's not, we all wish it would go down in April, but the way that the numbers are trending, it does not seem like April is the month for it to decrease for the Bank of Canada rate. I still see forecasting for it to go still lower, not as low as it was previously, um, but it is still going to decrease over the next year. I think we have to be a little bit patient with how they're going to do slow drops to the rate. That's a conservative approach. I was hoping you would say absolutely in April. So what's going to happen to people that, 
you know, those mortgages are just starting to come due. Like you said, are they not concerned that, you know, more people are going to be in trouble if they don't start to drop it or they should should be. They should be very, yeah, they should be thinking about it. Um, I don't know about you, Sherry, but I've seen a lot of people going from variable to fixed just to, again, ease those payments and feel a little bit of comfort in their payments and their structure. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think for, from what I've seen more, a lot of people are are definitely more interested in the fixed rate right now. Um but they're looking at shorter terms because you don't want to be locked into something for, for too long. And like the norm, the, the sort of the most comfortable rate or term is generally a five-year fixed. And that right now isn't the most ideal. It is the lowest rate. So when it comes to buyers, um, they can actually get more house if they're going for a five-year fixed because of the stress test, because we have to qualify at 2% above whatever the contract is. If you're taking that lower rate plus 2%, it's more house than if you were to take a three-year term. Two, three-year term are probably the most ideal. Uh, The two-year rates are definitely higher than a three-year, which is higher than a five-year. So um, shorter terms is really the solution, I think, for right now. For anybody that's uh, risk-adverse, um, variable in the next few months probably should be a conversation that people are having again. Because if we are anticipating rate cuts and they are anticipating, I don't agree with April. So Barb, you might not like my opinion. I don't think it's going to be April. I think it is going to be the summer. Um, economists are predicting three cuts this year. Uh, usually a cut is a quarter point, 25 bits. So that would essentially suggest that we're going to be about less than we are right now at the end of the year for a variable rate, not for fixed. Fixed go all over the place based on everything else. So um, I don't know. I think there's bigger conversations that you have to have in every situation because they are so different. So all your clients are unique, you guys. I know you got to look at every situation, but what are you recommending in terms of a rate right now? If a buyer comes to you, let's call it a first time home buyer, and you know that rates are coming down, but they want the security of the of the rate. What do you recommend? It depends, it depends on the first time home buyer and them wanting to get into the market. I feel that it is a different um, with the five year rate being so low. That makes a difference for some of the first time home buyers. It, it's not ideal, but they're also in the beginning stages of their home ownership. Mm-hmm. Um, with the higher two year and three year it kind of, it can push them out of the home that they are looking at or interested in. Mm -hmm. So a little bit, it's a hard conversation. It depends on what their plans are. Yeah, I do. I tend to to try to have that, you know, the five-year plan conversation to see where somebody's going to be. Are you planning on having babies, uh, traveling around the world, changing, changing employment, anything that's going to potentially change your income for qualifying down the road. If somebody's planning on making a, a career move in two years, um, then three years might not necessarily be the ideal time to look at refinancing anyway. So, you know, there's a lot of factors that have to come into play, um, which truly does, like you pointed out, Barb, make everybody an individual decision, an individual approach, because the five-year term is more cost-efficient today. If you think you're going to have to refinance it in three years, then we have to have a conversation on the penalty, and then maybe it's variable based on all of the other things that could come up. So um, that's you can't pinpoint it. It's tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's individual for sure. So it's been a roller coaster for realtors. It's been a roller coaster for mortgage brokers. And, you know, I I can't imagine, um, you know, if you work for a bank, you have to know that bank's policies and and all of their requirements. But you guys need to know how many lenders, policies, and <laughs> It's changing and what is a good match for every individual client. I don't think people get that about mortgage brokers. Like, you you know, you, you don't just work at one institution. You need to know them all. How do you guys deal with that? How do you keep on top of the products and, you know, what is good for your clients? 
I think you follow, you do have relationships with certain lenders and certain BDMs, but you also rely on the people you're working with, um, Betty, Sherry, Tara, for, because we have a conversation about it. Like it might be, I have this client, I don't know where to fit it. Um, and, and it's a lot of communication and reading the emails and really knowing your BDMs and having a good relationship with them. Okay. What's a BDM? Business Development Business Manager. manager. <laughs> yep. uh, sorry. For, for every lender, we have a, a point of contact so that okay. we're not bugging, bugging an underwriter or, or having to kind of do it on our own. So they tend to be allies in like, hey, I've got a deal. Let me let me talk to you about it. And we can, you know, discuss all the points that it might sink or or swim based on their guidelines and is there an exception? Is there a way around something? What would you need if, like, what kind of paperwork are you going to want to see? Um, and so they they are are kind of our direct point of contact for any one of our lenders to really to really know uh, what we can do or what we might be able to do. And if they need, sorry, go ahead. That's okay. If they need to check in with their management or an underwriter or something like that, um, that's who we go to. So we pretty much anybody, even the insurers, uh, Canada Guarantee, CMHC, uh, Genworth, Sajan, we have a contact with all of them as well. So um, sort of like outside sales, I guess, in the general public, but it's a business development manager to us. Right, right. It, Betty, I like, I mean, you guys know working with Betty and she couldn't be here, that Betty has always been the the lender in the community when the banks can't get it done, they call Betty, <laughs> right? Right. Yep. So, you know, um, you guys- We're hoping she's passed some of that genius on to us. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's so funny because I have relationships with banks too, and they go, we're calling Betty. <laughs> right. Yep. Yep. That's funny. So let's talk about your clients over the last year and a half. Um, you know, because you guys probably were involved like real estate agents, were involved with selling houses at the top of the market to people and mortgage lenders like yourselves probably um, saw people into a variable rate because it seemed like the right idea at the time. And then nobody predicted that it was going to continue to climb, climb, climb the way it did. So how do you deal with nurturing your clients through what's happened? And because the way I see it, it's probably a great opportunity for people like yourselves because there's probably a lot of mortgage brokers out there that didn't keep in contact, that buried their head in the sand, didn't know how to deal with what was happening with some of their clients. And that creates opportunity. How are you guys dealing with your clients with those matters? Both of us maybe can add to that. Sure, I'll go. Um, so I, I'd like to think that my clients uh, remember me, but I also remember them. And we, you know, apart from having a good CRM to sort of rely on and make sure, um, I, I hope that we've built the relationship that they know that they can count on me. I mean, there, there were times where it was sort of looking into, um, anybody that had the variable rate, making sure that you check in to see how they're doing or talking to them in advance about, okay, when you get uncomfortable, like these are the steps that we need to do. And I mean, I will admit I have, I own a mouth guard for sleeping because there is a lot of stress involved in, in worrying about somebody else's financial comfort, future ability, all of that stuff uh, that, that we have to try to be, you know, business oriented, give them the numbers, let them make the right decision, hope they make the truly right decision, whether, whether they want to or not, because there was a time. And I mean, the most common thing is what is the lowest rate that I can get? Not, can I afford my payment? Is this the right decision for me? What's my exit strategy? Like there's a lot of other things that people should be concerned about, but it's always what's the lowest rate. And for a while it was a variable rate and it's not anymore because we didn't see it coming up, jump increasing 10 times. Yeah. Like that wasn't, no, even no. in the conversations that I was having with people, it was sort of like, I don't, I don't see it going that bad, but if it does, like you need to be mindful of what happens. And yeah. Did. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think it is based on relationship. It's having those conversations. Where are they headed? Is it comfortable? You know, are you comfortable with change? That's a big 
thing to be speaking about with your clients and those touch points. Like I know a good CRM, but um, I know Sherry does it, Betty, Tara, everyone does it. It's those touch points throughout the year to say, is everything okay? How's it going? Because a lot of, and you do find out how their life has transitioned sometimes mm -hmm. and they need a bigger house or a smaller house or employment has changed. So and they don't always know even that they have an option to maybe make a make a change to help their situation. No, no. people often try to solve the problem themselves first uh, and can end up sticking in that mindset for a little bit too long. Like it, it, if you're to anybody that's listening to this, if you need help or you're not even sure if you need help or not, it's best to actually talk to somebody that knows all of the different options or the solutions that might be out there before you know, let them say, no, you have to do this all by yourself. There's nothing else that you can do uh, before you decide that that's the only way out of whatever problem you're in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and you guys too, I mean, let's face it, you don't get paid unless you do a mortgage. And so very quickly, people probably, you get talking with people. How quickly do you have to react to a uh, this is not happening. <laughs> I mean, you want to be helpful. Everybody, I mean, you probably are solicited and you offer help and you don't get paid all the time without a doubt, as do I, that's our job. And we're okay. That's with part that. of the job. Yeah. Part of the it's job. Part of the job. Yeah. Um, I, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I, that's okay. I think that it's a no, but not a no forever. Like there are opportunities. We do have those conversations that it's just we can't find a solution for you at this very moment but it's a lot of advice saying here try this budget do these steps and then we can put you in a better position it's down the road that's what it is for me anyways I think Sherry you're the same it's you know yeah, you work really I, with your clients but I you also it, have to sorry I was, I was just going to say, I called it the Sherry Vina Mortgage Foundation because there was a lot of free advice in 2023. And, uh, you know, you hope that that advice comes back with business somewhere down the road, but there's no guarantee. And there was, right? Like, Melissa, yeah. a lot of times you're sort of like, no, you cannot walk yeah. away from your 1.94% interest rate right now. For as much as I would love you to do your bathroom, I am not breaking this mortgage for you. So I'm not taking money. Like there's, you know, there's, we are legally required to look out for our clients. And I know that, I mean, there's some people that don't necessarily do that, but um, I can attest that that's pretty much the, the backbone of what Centum Omni is, is that the client is absolutely the priority in all of this um, that we have to look after. Yeah. Right. And Money a lot of, I've, I've had conversations with people now because um, it's almost in the initial meeting. Well, how do you get paid? Do I have to pay you? And having that conversation with new brand new clients is I don't take any money from you. I get paid when the mortgage is closed, you know, and explain how that works. And you do, you do give out a lot of free advice. You do a lot of educating. Um, again, these clients sometimes aren't expertise in the finance world, in the mortgage world. So you go through all the steps with them, educate them to the best of your ability, and then, you know, you hope for a relationship down the road as well. Let's talk about that right now then. So if a buyer wants to, you know, if they're looking, what do they need to do to position themselves right now to get into the market? Let's assume they don't have any equity. Let, let's assume they don't have a house to sell. Well, they should just, I mean, if they should call, they should call first to really like, so, um, I, I would call it more like a future home buyer. So not a first time home buyer. If you're not ready yet, but you're going to be ready at some point in time, uh, that's where the phone call should start. That's where the pre-approval could start. Um, you know, to talk about the first time home buyer savings account or RSPs or the Niagara housing grant or, you know, any of the other sort of bits and pieces that Somebody doesn't know about because this is not their industry. That's why it's a professional. So even if you're starting from scratch, 20 something years old, being like, I know that I want to buy a house in four years. What do I need to do? Right. Like you don't know the income qualifying. You don't know what debts matter. Maybe you need somebody to tell you to not buy the truck before you want to buy the house. <laughs> like there's 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 sound advice 
for free in that phone call. And it doesn't take a whole lot of time to just get an idea of what you need to do to get ready. What incentives and are it, right now? Incentives as far as like home buyer plans? Yeah, for, for, for buyers, what incentives are out there? So we just got rid of one, not we yes. as Incentive Omni, but the government came out with a first time home buyer incentive program uh, that didn't really get a whole lot of traction. It wasn't necessarily uh, a beneficial program that was gone as of yesterday. Um, the Niagara Regional Housing has an amazing grant of 5%. Um, it's a forgivable loan as long as you live in the house for, don't quote me, 20 years. Um, there's some facts, there's some stipulations on, on who qualifies for it. Um, and then there's RSPs and tax-free savings accounts. I don't know, Melissa, if you want to add to that. No, that I was, I was going through my head and that was pretty much the, all the programs that are out there. There's and not still the land um, transfer tax. Oh yeah. So rebates, yeah. yes. Rebates for first time buyers. There's the land transfer tax rebate. Uh, there might even be a rebate when you're filing your taxes as well. Um, yes. That's okay. still there. That's great. Well, I don't know. Is there any other touch points that you guys think would bring value to this call before we wrap it up? I would think just to reiterate again, have the conversation, give the call to Sherry, Betty, myself to have you know, understand what's available out there. I think there's a lot of options that people don't know. And I think the one thing I would like to add, and I mean, if I could have a megaphone, I'd, I'd shout it over and over again. If you are concerned about your position financially, reach out. I mean, these are for homeowners, people that have a property right now. If you're worried about losing your house, um, if you're worried about your debt climbing, there are second mortgages, there is private financing, like there are options that aren't the taboo that they might sound like they are, they're just helpful, and a temporary solution in an uncomfortable spot. That's great advice. I've gotten a few calls in the last few months, actually two from past clients that said, you know, Barb, just tell me what you think my house is worth, I have somebody buying it. And basically they're fire sailing it to a third party that's going to flip in both cases. They just, yeah. rather than making yeah. a call and refinancing, I said, are you sure that's your best option or putting it to the open market and let's see what we can get in today's market. Yeah. They were doing one of those deals. Uh, they were fixing it themselves. Yeah. 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 And that's, yeah. that's a little bit of fear, a little bit, you know, a little bit of fear of this is my only option. This is, this is all I have. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, thanks so much for coming to the podcast today. I think it went okay. What do you think? I think it did. Yeah. It it did, yeah. It's exciting. Good. good. Well, thanks again, you guys. You know how much I rely on you both in, in, uh, in my job. I mean, you guys make it happen for us. And without you, we wouldn't be able to put people in houses. So we appreciate you very much. We appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Thanks again. Thank and you. For everybody that tuned in to my new podcast. Thank you. Let's talk real estate at home with Barbara Scarlett in Fort Erie. Thanks for listening. See ya. Bye. See ya.